Hello and welcome to Coffee with KT and the Coordinators. I am Kathrangi Thakur of KT, the President of the Franchise Student Union. And I'm Ricardo Souza, your Communications and Advocacy Coordinator. Today we bring to you a very special Academic Integrity edition of our show. And for that, we're joined by a very special guest with us. Megan Shannon, who is the Academic Integrity Manager at Fanshawe College. Welcome, Megan. Thank you so much, Katie and Ricardo. Thank you for having me today. Um, so I'm Megan Shannon, Manager of Academic Integrity here at the college, and I work with students to prevent academic offenses from happening and also to remedy those that do happen. I also work with faculty so as to investigate potential academic offenses because we don't want anything recorded um, or anything on a student record if it's not legitimate, if an offense hasn't been confirmed. So while I work with both students and faculty, I so appreciate the chance to get to chat with you today so that hopefully I can get some information out to students to prevent offenses from happening and then also prevent any warnings um, or penalties being issued or applied. So thank you for having me. Thank you, Megan, for being with us today. So, Megan, we've received a couple of questions from our students. Uh, uh, the first question being, what is considered plagiarism and how students can prevent being penalized? Okay, so there are a couple different categories of plagiarism. Generally speaking, if a student were to submit work that they themselves didn't do, either perhaps submitting another student's assignment as if it were their own, um, copying and pasting content from the internet or online sources into their work, and then submitting that as if it were something that they had themselves written or thought out, that would be considered plagiarism. It's passing off someone, someone else's ideas as if it were your own. Um, it can also include neglecting to cite or failing to cite, and in some cases, not citing properly. We can also see some instances where students are submitting work that they themselves did do, but it'll be an assignment that they submitted for a previous course. So in submitting something that's already been marked so that it can be marked again, because that's seen as an attempt to gain an unfair advantage, the students can actually be plagiarizing themselves. So those are the main categories. And then as far as preventing them, certainly citing any information or content that they incorporate or copy into their work, that's the number one tip. There are so many resources and information um, pieces available to students through the Academic Integrity Office webpage and the Library Learning Commons as well. And we have a number of staff who are available to have online and over the phone appointments to help students with uh, the citing process. And then if they're looking at content and they're not sure whether it can be used or whether they can incorporate it into their assignments, having a discussion with their course instructor is a great way to determine whether they're on the right track or not and how to keep going. I think it's important to mention, Megan, that we have all, we have a lot of resources at the FSU website under the John of Chief Initiative yeah. and the students can consult there a lot of, of APA citations, a lot of resources, mm -hmm. workshops and all they need to prevent plagiarism. The next question we received from a student was whether or not they were allowed to use post-content websites. So students should ultimately be using online resources, online sites and services that provide legitimate information. So information that's up to date, that's relevant, and it's, it's legitimate. A great way to find online sources is through the Library Learning Commons. The library subscribes to a number of sources that provide peer-reviewed articles, um, journals on a whole number of topics. The issue with the online, the course content sharing sites that are online, um, they do offer students a chance to post and upload completed assignments, um, which can be very tempting either to consult or to perhaps use as, as a student's own, but the issue is that there's no guarantee that that assignment that they can find on those sites is complete, um, that it followed the instructions, that it received decent grades. So they're putting themselves at risk by consulting these, um, of actually not doing their assignment properly, but of also making use of resources that aren't permitted. Um, and it could put them in a position where they're in jeopardy of receiving either an offense for using resources that are not permitted um, or for plagiarizing, for submitting or consulting work that's not the own. Yes, and it's important to mention that if, uh, if a student is struggling with some kind of course, they can like come to FSU and use some resources that are available to them to help in this path. So the main resources we have is the peer tutoring program and the peer note taker. 
that is basically student help student. So they can have all one-on-one -on -one sessions about the subject they chose. Mm -hmm. So basically what I'm hearing is that uh, both Fanshawe and the FSU have great resources available. So students, please reach out to us uh, instead of visiting these course content websites. I think that we will spend the issue. Another question that we received from the students was, uh, you know, during open book tests, mm -hmm. are they actually allowed to communicate with their classmates uh, through WhatsApp, Facebook, or Messenger? Right, so that's a great question. So if a test or an evaluation is open book, that generally applies to the course resources. So perhaps they can consult notes that are available on their FOL course site, um, perhaps they can use their textbook, or maybe they're allowed to look at certain websites or use online services that their course instructor has identified as being permitted. So open book generally applies to textual or course related content. Um, we do understand that online delivery and online testing is so new to students and we do want students, we want to encourage students to discuss course content with each other. But an online evaluation, such as a test, a quiz, or an exam, that's really the student's opportunity to demonstrate their own understanding of course content. So if they're communicating with other students or collaborating with other students while the test is in progress, it doesn't give them the opportunity to demonstrate that, and it actually ends up compromising the integrity of the test that they end up submitting. So they should really be, students should ultimately be um, completing their test on their own. If they have questions about the content of the test or a certain question, they should be directing that to their course instructor. But to really avoid, you know, have your phone out of reach, um, have any messenger services on your laptop off, focus on demonstrating what you yourself know, not what you can collectively, um, the answers that you could potentially collectively come up with, um, because the marks can't be split. And it unfortunately puts a lot of students um, at risk of having penalties applied. Warnings aren't generally issued for um, test situations, for offenses that occur during tests. It's generally a direct penalty. The person reaching out to other students could receive a mark of zero on compromised portions of the test or the test as a whole. And then anyone else who's collaborated or communicated and contributed to that can find themselves at risk of having a penalty as well. Yeah, and it's important to remember that we are always here to help and if you have any doubts about plagiarizing or if you are suspicious that some initiative or some behavior are not complying with all the college's practices, just reach out to us or the Academic Integrity Team. Well, thank you so much Megan and Ricardo. That was really informative and I sincerely hope that we were able to help students understand academic integrity better. Thank you, Katie, for having me today here. Thank you so much for having me. No, of course. As the world continues to change around us, so too does the FSU. Which is why I urge all of you to get connected with us on our social media platforms such as Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, using the handle at the rate Fanshawe SU. Also, please don't forget to visit our website www.fsu.ca on a regular basis. Thank you for watching Coffee with Katie and the coordinators and we'll see you soon.